France is enraged and inflamed. Last night, Bordeaux Town Hall was set ablaze amid ongoing protests. You can hear some in the crowd outside cheering. In Paris, where bins and newspaper kiosks have been set alight, some firefighters put out the flames. Others joined in with the protesters. As nationwide strikes and marches against raising the pension age appear to be turning increasingly violent, both because of rioters and the reaction of the police, perhaps it's not the best time for any state visit, let alone hosting a king at Versailles. After all, last time protesters marched on that palace, it didn't turn out too well for monarchy. And yet, even yesterday, while striking workers said they'd refuse to roll out the red carpet, French ministers were insisting there were no security problems for King Charles's visit, and the embassy in the UK was celebrating the upcoming event. By this morning, it was over. In a humiliation for the president, he's had to ask the UK to postpone the visit. Je pense que nous ne serions pas sérieux. I think that we would not be serious and would lack common sense to propose to His Majesty the King and the Queen Consort to come do a state visit in the middle of the protests. I made the decision to call him this morning and tell him what the situation was. Once that decision had been taken, common sense and friendship lead us to suggest a delay. So for now, this is the closest France will get to a visit from the King. A wax statue of him was unveiled at a Paris museum today. The man himself will be heading straight to part two of the planned state visits, Germany mid next week. Listen, it's not a joyous time in the moment. He's right not to come. There are protests and strikes everywhere, and that's normal, since Paris is a city with real residents. I like King Charles. I don't know why he's not coming. He should normally come, really. It's good for France, for Britain, for Europe. And while protests get angrier, even featuring firework throwing, <laughs> President Macron has insisted his pension plans will go ahead, calling them a necessity. He's made clear law enforcement has his full backing. Yet they've been involved in scenes condemned by Amnesty International for excessive force. This was the police reaction to a photographer who is quite clearly shouting he's a member of the press. And so the stench of garbage and flames of fury in the street seem to have become the new normal in France. But will any of it force policy change? Well, I've been speaking to the French MEP Manon Aubry from the left-wing party La France Insoumise and began by asking her if the protesters would be pleased that King Charles had to postpone his visit. Well, it looks actually that uh, um, we, we as protesters, we have more impact on the king <laughs> in the UK rather than the king, uh, our own king in France. So at least uh, we're having a sort of first win. Uh, and I do hope that our own national king is now going to listen to the people in the streets. But I, in terms of the actual issue of retirement age, you know, I mean, the French people must see what's going on around the world. In the UK, it's 66. It's going to be 67. For many young people, they probably won't get a pension until they're 70. People are living longer. They're costing more money. Someone's got to pay for it. What, I mean, what, why does France think it can buck the trend? Our pension system doesn't have a big deficit. Not at all. Far from there, even. What we're talking here is a potential deficit in 10 years, represented 0.1% of our GDP. In other words, this is nothing. Um, there are many ways uh, you could fill that very little gap that is hypo, uh, hypothetical. So, oh no, the reason why Emmanuel Macron is doing that reform, this is not for economic reasons. This is just by ideology. And it's clear that the people in France, they don't want this, and this is why we have such a big mobilization that it's still supported by 80% of the population, which is super high given the length of that mobilization. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the interesting thing as well, isn't it? I mean, you talked about 68. In modern times, we've seen street protests from the right in France. Do you think this is the issue that unites left and right? Well, I, I 
I think at the moment it's not even an issue of left and right. It's an issue. It's a fight for workers first and 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 foremost. Um, so what's going on in in the streets? You know, initially has been has been a movement for social rights, but it is becoming also beyond that a movement for democracy, because the way Macron is trying to impose his reform, uh, as I said, without even having a vote in the parliament, is really clearly, you know. A coup de force, we would say in, 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 in French. I don't know if it makes sense uh, uh, in English, but he's really trying to push this through without using democratic methods. So what we can see is that the movement in the streets is moving. We're now starting a sort of an institutional crisis that is very serious in France. And I think the best way to solve it is just having people to vote again and probably to change our institutions to be closer to the people. Manon Aubrey, thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much.